Finally, China and Russia condemn North Korea over nuclear aggression, but still won't back Trump. After weeks of prodding by President Donald Trump, China has finally condemned North Korea's actions publicly. However, the communist nation still criticized America's actions in the region and is refusing to commit to America's side if military action breaks. In addition, Russia has managed to increase their criticism of North Korea, while warning America to tone down the rhetoric. As one of North Korea's leading partners and enablers, China is in a unique position to pressure Kim Jong-un into some concessions. With a few minor exceptions, they have done little to publicly intervene in the crisis. Instead, China has refused to back the position of the United States, Japan, South Korea, and their allies. President Trump's frustration with China is evident, as he has publicly called them out for their failure to help resolve the crisis. He took the strained relationship to a new level when he recently floated the idea, via Twitter, that he may halt trade with anyone backing North Korea. Such a move could be devastating for both China and America economically, and it is unclear if that threat forced China's new comments. They did, however, include some reserved criticism of the United States for elevating tensions. More from Yahoo News North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's dangerous game of brinkmanship was admonished by Xinhua, the Communist Party of China's news agency. However, this was followed by the assertion that the U.S. belligerent tone in military exercises on DPRK's Democratic People's Republic of Korea, as China officially refers to North Korea, doorstep hate into Pyongyang's sense of security. This, Xinhua suggested, was what prompted the nuclear test that caused as many political tremors as it did physical ones. Zhang Xiuang, China's foreign ministry spokesman said that China made stern representations with North Korean diplomats following the blast. He also said, on the same day the U.S. envoy to the United Nations called for the strongest possible measures against Mr. Kim's regime that all parties should refrain from further escalating tensions. The collapse of the Kim dictatorship would cause millions of North Korean refugees to flee to China, and U.S. troops could be based in a reunified Korea bordering China something Mr. Xi would not tolerate. China will never allow chaos and war on the Korean peninsula, said Liu Jie, the Chinese ambassador to the UN, as he called for nations to respond to its joint proposal with Russia that North Korea stop its military actions in return for the U.S. stopping military exercises with South Korea. In a dig about Mr. Trump's threat to impose harsher sanctions on countries that trade with North Korea, namely China as Pyongyang's biggest trading partner, the newspaper added, if the U.S. is not able to tame North Korea, how can it force big powers such as China and Russia to yield to its demands through sanctions and deterrence? Russia is also concerned of what war with North Korea could mean for them. That led to yet another warning from Moscow to North Korea, with a plea to the United States that they show more restraint. As the country on the outside looking in on the North Korean crisis, it seems Russia does not want Trump to be the only world leader dictating terms to North Korea. From the Daily Caller Russia's Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Ryabkov alerted North Korea on Monday, saying that any mistake from from Kim Jong-un and his army could lead to war. Ryabkov carried through on former threats that Russia made emphasizing that North Korea needs to immediately stop its continuous nuclear tests and ongoing threats to countries around the world, saying there should be no room for escalation. Those who are smarter and stronger should show restraint, he said. Given the current situation, any miscalculation may lead to a political or military outbreak, rather than to a nuclear test like the one recently conducted, which actually reflects the deteriorating situation in Northeast Asia. Ryabkov told reporters. Neither President Trump nor Secretary of Defense James Mattis have gone easy on North Korea. After Trump promised fire and fury upon North Korea, Mattis stepped out and said a massive military response.
The Brink, China just answered Trump on North Korea will it mean nuclear war? On Sunday, President Trump warned the world that he will consider cutting off trade with countries doing business with North Korea. This proves that Trump does not want war. He hopes to be able to avoid it if at all possible, by really turning the heat up on countries that continue to trade with North Korea. Like China. China's foreign ministry spokesman responded this way, What is definitely unacceptable to us is that on the one hand we work so hard to peacefully resolve this issue and on the other hand our interests are subject to sanctions and jeopardized. He also said he felt it was unfair. I don't think Trump's plan of action is unacceptable or unfair at all. China may have worked so hard to peacefully resolve things with North Korea, but it clearly has not worked. After all, North Korea just claimed to have successfully tested a miniaturized hydrogen bomb capable of fitting on an intercontinental ballistic missile. Missile. Martin, who joins us on the phone. Um, David, first things first, we know what Pyongyang is saying, but does the Pentagon believe that North Korea now has the capability to strike the U.S. mainland with a nuclear warhead? Well, they, they believe that the uh, North Koreans have the components of a weapon that could strike uh, the U.S. homeland. They have a long range missile that they've tested on at least two occasions. They have a nuclear device which they have exploded, but they have not yet proven that they can put that nuclear device on top of a missile and have it accurately reach a target in the United States. That's going to require more tests. What military options are President Trump and Defense Secretary James Mattis discussing? Well, uh, they're the obvious ones of a, a, a preemptive strike to uh, take out uh, North Korea's uh, nuclear facilities. But the problem with that is that uh, it would be very hard to take out all of their nuclear facilities, and it would be very hard to prevent uh, North Korea from retaliating with uh, an artillery barrage against the South Korean capital of uh, uh, Seoul. Um, there are obviously uh, options for shooting down any missile that uh, threatens either the United States uh, or um, American territories like uh, the American air base uh, on the island of Guam. And then there are lesser military options, which we might not see, which uh, consist of cyber attacks. Uh, mm. But um, cyber attacks uh, are of uh, questionable use against a, uh, a country that is uh, so cut off from the uh, the uh, internet that it, they may really not be what uh, the Pentagon would call a lucrative target when it comes to cyber attacks. Right. Um, David, are you hearing anything that suggests the Pentagon is preparing for military action or upping its readiness? Well, uh, it's, it's readiness to uh, intercept a, a, a missile should it uh, be aimed at the United States or, uh, or Guam or for that matter, uh, U.S. bases in Korea or U.S. bases in Japan, is already at a, at a fairly high state of alert. I mean, th those, uh, those missiles are, are ready to be fired uh, on uh, literally just a, a few minutes' uh, warning. Mm -hmm. uh, the forces in Korea, uh, their slogan is fight tonight, so they're always on a uh, high state, state of alert. But uh, since Secretary uh, Mattis made that, statement yesterday about um, we have uh, we have the capability to take a massive uh, uh, military action against North Korea. I know of no uh, military units that have been uh, moved. I mean, the U.S. Uh, standing forces are more than enough to deal with North Korea. It's just that the consequences uh, for all concern would be um, atrocious. Mm. David Martin. Thank you, David. Sure thing. This is no joke, y'all. This madman in North Korea must be stopped and China holds the cards to stopping them without war. Trump must keep up the pressure on China.